So my name is Megan and I am a product trainer here at Bill.com, um, internal and also external uh, for customers as well. So we're going to spend the next 45 minutes um, talking about connecting through the Bill.com network. So we kind of have some objectives that we're going to go over today. That is going to be to learn and navigate the multiple ways to connect through the Bill.com network. So we're going to confirm the connection through the network. How do we do that? What does it look like? And then we're also going to go over the ability to define the network connection statuses. So what I first want to talk about is how to access the network from within bill.com. When you are working from within bill.com, you can look to the top right hand corner here you are going to see the network icon and in this uh, screenshot here we can see it's the little people in the top right hand corner and it says network underneath so you can click on that and a box is going to pop up and that is going to reflect the received connection requests along with the vendors that you have the ability to invite for e-payment if you want to access additional network features, you can click on access additional network features. Um, and I'm gonna kind of go, we're gonna swap back and forth during this presentation from the deck also over to a live account so you can see that um, in, in live form. So we're switching over here to this test account and we can see that here we have the network icon this is the box that pops up with the received connection requests as long, um, along with the vendors that I have listed that I can invite for e-payment. If I want to get to the network specifically or those additional features that the network offers, I can go ahead and click on that. And it is going to load, here we go, um, with the network and all of these extra tabs that we have um, with this within this network feature so that is how you get to both of those um, we have multiple tabs that we're going to kind of go through as we move through the session and we can see those here in this second screenshot where we have overview we can search we can look at our connections we can look at our invitations and we can also look at our network profile All right, so we're gonna start with connecting to the large biller network. So we're gonna kind of run through this. So most billers are already set up to receive payments electronically through the large biller network. So for this, we recommend connecting with your billers that are credit card, utilities, insurance, cable, um, any other service providers. How you wanna do this is you wanna to go to the vendors page and you wanna click on any one of your large biller names, such as AT&T, Verizon, Visa, Aetna. Um, here we're using the example of Southwest Gas Corporation. Once you have identified that large biller, you can click the review and connect banner to see available matches. After you have done that, you would wanna add your account number and your zip code as it appears on your invoice. This is how your large billers are going to know how to apply your payment specifically. Um, those payments are sent um, in payment files, CCD plus payment files, and they'll want to have that information so they know how to apply your payment once they get it. All right, so we're gonna kind of go through um, some slides here and we're gonna kind of rotate back and forth between live. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna switch over and we're gonna go ahead and go to the vendors. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose my Southwest Gas um, Corporation here that I already have set up as a vendor record. If you don't have it set up as a vendor record, that's fine. You can connect and add the vendor if you need to um, in this, demonstration I already have the vendor set up. So we're going to go ahead and click on set up e-payments. This is the um, Southwest Gas Corporation that you can see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how you can do this through the network section 
as opposed to through the vendor section. So here is um, the overview screen for the large biller network. So um, we can see that we have Southwest Gas Corporation um, is listed here. So there's a couple things we can do. We can do it from the vendor section or we can do it from um, the network section. I'm gonna go ahead and click on review here. This is the recommended match that is coming up for my Southwest Gas Corporation. Um, again, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have the correct zip code and then also the account number so that you can co connect to the accurate um, large biller. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on confirm and connect. And then we can see that my request to connect was sent successfully. So I'm gonna pop back over here to my vendors. And once you have connected, I do have some uh, three different examples here and that's because this is a test account. Um, once you have connected through the large biller network, you are going to see that it does list that you were connected electronically through them. Um, if for some reason you have not connected to the correct one, you do have the ability to unlink your connection um, just by clicking on more actions, unlink, and then clicking on disconnect. Um, after We did have a release on Friday. So uh, post Friday, we now are going to populate a modal and it is going to ask the reason that you would like to disconnect from your vendor. So you would just wanna choose one of these options here. Um, if you don't see an option, you can go ahead and add something in that text box. So um, for this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that the payment information has changed. So then we can see that we are back to mailing a check for our large biller network. Right, so this kind of um, is just running through uh, everything that we kind of just talked about. If your vendor doesn't populate on the list, you can still search by clicking on advanced search and then entering your company name. And then this is the connection that we just saw when I searched that I can go ahead and connect instantly to that large biller. This is the last screen that is going to indicate um, just that kind of, you know, solid, the 100% that you are connecting to the right vendor. That is the one that you want to connect to. Um, again, two pieces of information are required for the large biller networks. That would be the zip code and then also the account number with the vendor. And then here we can see this shows the completed connection to the large biller through the network. Okay, so now we're gonna kind of talk about um, setting up and using the network. So what we're gonna look at is, we have a few different things going on on this page when we click on overview underneath the network. And that would be this overview page right here. So we have a few things going on um, here. We have in the kind of top left-hand side or the middle side, we have, these are possible matches in the network based on your vendor list. So we can see here that I have some large billers listed, AT&T and also Southwest Gas Corporation. Down below that, we can see that there is the ability to connect with vendors you were already paying by check who may be using bill.com. So these are people who might have bill.com accounts who might be, be using bill.com. You are currently paying them with a check. These are going to be um, those suggested invitations that these people may be able to accept electronic payments. And we can see here that I have one um, vendor listed there that I have worked with recently. Over on the right-hand side, you can see how your rate of e-payment adoption compares with the top e-payment users within our network. 
So mine is at zero. This is a test account. Um, your percentage is going to be based on wh what you're paying and then what other people within the network are paying. 92% um, it looks like. So I'm at 0% of 92%. Um, so we can see when I highlight over this, 20% of bill.com customers on average paid 92% of their vendors electronically in the last year. So that is the overview screen and what you have the ability to do and what's listed there on the overview screen. Now we're going to talk about searching within the network. All of these tabs, again, can be found if you click on network in the top right hand corner and then you click on access additional network features here. So under the search option, you can search either um, uh, business name or payment network uh, ID, or as you refer, some people call it the PNI. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the payment network ID, it is a unique identifier for the bill.com account. Each account has its own payment network ID, which can be obtained from the vendor or customer you want to connect with. We do have the instructions on here. Um, if your vendor or customer does not know where to find their payment network ID, they can click on settings and that's that gear icon in the top right hand corner. Under my company, they can click on profile and then they're gonna go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page. And there is where their payment network ID is going to live. They can give that to you and you can connect with them that way. So here we're gonna go ahead and enter a payment network ID. And I'm gonna go ahead and search. And what is going to happen is in this instance, it's giving me the option to reconnect, which means that I have actually already previously been connected to this vendor. Um, if there is not the option to reconnect, there are going to be two options. One is to pay as a vendor or get paid as a, um, as a customer to you. So it depends on how you are working with this person and what you need to do. Um, so here would be my reconnect option. And then this is what you are going to see um, where you, you are going to need to determine your relationship with that person. If you want to send payments and they are an existing vendor, um, or if you want to do only that and you don't want to receive payments or you want to receive payments and it is a new or existing customer. Okay, um, so once you determine that, you would go ahead and proceed with that and you would be able to um, connect with them and that is the search option. That is how you can search through the network, uh, business name or payment network ID on that search. All right, let's go ahead and talk about connections um, within the network. So the connections is going to be the place where you can keep track of your existing connections all in one place. And that is all connected vendors and or customers are going to be listed here. So this is an all in one if you're trying to determine if you were connected with them prior, if you sent them an invitation and they rejected it, or you recalled it, you're gonna be able to find all of this information under your connection screen. So we go ahead and we click on connections and we can see here that these are all of the connections that I have listed. So we can see that I have some um, that are customers and then I also have one that is um, a vendor. So these, this is where you um, can add new connections if you need to. You can also show disconnected companies if you had some other connections and you disconnected from them. You can see those as well. And to add the new connection, it's going to just ask you for that business name or that payment network ID.
All right. Let's go ahead and switch over to invitations. So invitations within the network is going to be where you can monitor the invitations that have been sent or received. You can also sort them by status. So what I want to point out is that when we click on invitations, it's always going to default to the pending status here. Um, we have a couple different things going on here. So we have Right now, we are currently underneath the received bucket, and these are pending. So you can see that I don't have anything that pulls up here. If I want to see all of my received or um, accepted or rejected or expired, I can go ahead and filter that out here. So for you guys, I'm just going to click on any, and this is going to show all of my received invitations. So we can see that some of them I've accepted. Um, there have been some that have been recalled from the other end, um, and it gives you the invitation dates, status, and then also what type of invitation was it? Was it to get paid or was it to pay? That is also the case for sent invitations. So you have received and you have sent invitations that live under the same tab within the network. Here we can see these are my current pending invitations that have been sent out. So these were all to pay and they are all pending. So none of my invitations have been accepted by my vendors to get paid from myself. We can go ahead and click on any and that's going to give us um, all of these. So we can see that we have some that are pending. We have um, some that are have been accepted. We have some that have been expired. Um, so you have the visibility to check what is happening with all of your invitations um, for your connections all through this one little tab. All right, so now let's talk about the network profile. So the network profile, what that is, is um, that is going to be what other users see when they're searching for your business in the bill.com network. So if you have a logo, a business logo, and you want to go ahead and add that to make your profile more recognizable to people who are searching for you within the network. So to access the network profile, again, it's going to be under network and then additional features. And then it's this profile tab that's right over here on the right hand side. So we can see that this is my network profile, the Crooked Garden got a picture of a chicken and it has all of my information down here below. It has my payment network ID, address, things like that. <clears throat> um, if you want to add a photo, if you don't have one added or you would like to change that, you would go ahead and you would click over edit company profile. And then this is going to take you to your company profile. So this is, is it a public profile? Is it limited? Is it private? What have you chosen for your company? All of your company information, phone number, and then we have the uh, picture here so you can update your logo as needed. It has all of your information um, down below, other information, um, all of that good stuff for your network profile. Um, network profile to everybody in the network is only going to show um, this information here. So just your name, your member sense, picture, connections, and then um, who that's managed by, and then the payment network ID. Um, for the logo picture, it will need to be a picture of one megabyte or less for that upload. So you just kind of have to keep uh, shrinking that down to get it to fit um, here as the logo for the network profile. Um, these are kind of the screenshots as we run through um, for you to edit your logo or add a different one or change it. You would just upload that from your computer um, of course, that one megabyte size, and then you would just go ahead and save it, and that will be reflected in your network profile. All right, so now we're going to talk about how we connect multiple vendors to the same company within Bill.com. So 
sometimes you may have multiple accounts and therefore multiple account numbers um, with the same vendor. So an example of this would be if you have Verizon Business and you also have Verizon Personal, you're gonna have two different statements that come in, one for your business, one for your personal. They are going to have different account numbers, but they are the same vendors. In your company, there is going to need to be a separate vendor record for each unique account number to ensure that the payments are applied to the correct account. Um, this is for those large miller networks um, or also for those small um, individual vendors. If your vendor uses bill.com or if an invite has been sent to them to receive e-payments, you can connect all those vendor records with the same company so that all the payments to that vendor can be e-payments. We are gonna run through that. I know that was a mouthful. Um, connecting with the vendor, of course, one of them must be set up to receive e-payments already. So one of the vendors that you're connecting to, whether it's large biller or individual, must be, be, must be receiving e-payments um, already, either by connecting through the network or you have got with them and received their payment network ID. Once you are connected with them, you can use that information from the connection to connect the remaining vendor accounts to that same business. So we're gonna kind of run through um, an example of steps one through 12 right now um, to connect multiple um, vendors to one vendor. So we can see here that I have um, Cash Callahan and I have Cash Callahan 2 and then I also have Acres Callahan. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and go through the network. We're gonna click on connections. And we can see here that I have uh, Cash Callahan as a vendor already. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this um, vendor. I'm gonna go ahead and get the payment network ID, which is located under the details tab. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and, and uh, copy it. And then I wanna go ahead and connect Acres uh, because these are the same vendor, but they have different account numbers, uh, but I want them to be linked together. So your vendor list is going to be populated on the left hand side. I'm going to go ahead and click on acres. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on more actions and I'm going to click on enter PNI. I'm going to go ahead and search for this. And we can see here that the vendor cash has popped up. So I'm gonna go ahead and click connect to pay. This is just confirming that we are connecting to the right vendor. So we are now linking acres to cash. And we're gonna go ahead and click on confirm. And then we can see that the acres Callahan vendor record is going to be um, accepted. And that invitation was sent. And these two vendors will then be linked together. So anytime you have multiple vendors, if you have say uh, multiple Verizons or you have multiple individual vendors like I have, you can repeat those steps one through 12 and you can link all of those companies together. And this is kind of just goes through the screenshots of everything that we just did. So we went through the network, we clicked on connections, we clicked on the vendor name under my connection. That is our screenshot um, in the top left hand corner. The second screenshot in the top right hand corner is getting that payment network ID from that vendor's page. And then in the lower left hand corner that is showing us to connect acres uh, to cash um, and that is confirming that connection and then step number 12 over on the right hand side is we are adding that person as a connection 
uh, to that vendor. Okay, um, let's talk about invitations sent to a user already using bill.com. Um, so what happens when you send an invitation out to somebody and they're already using bill.com? Uh, that might have happened to some of you online. Maybe they already have an account. They get an invitation for you that's going to ask them to set up another account and that isn't necessarily what they want to do. Um, so we're going to kind of go ahead and go through that. Um, once you have the customers or the vendors payment network ID, because they already have their account, you can go ahead and add that PNI to the vendors details in your AP account. And that is going to close out the pending invitation. So, um, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and go through that, um, these screenshots in our test account here. So we're going to go ahead and use Cash Callahan too. We um, have talked to Cash and he already has a bill.com account and he doesn't want invitations, doesn't want to deal with any of that. So he just decided to give me um, his payment network ID from his account, and I'm just going to go ahead and connect to him that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on enter the payment network ID. We're going to go ahead and search for that. We can see there is Cash's account. We know that that's him based on the fact that he's given us his payment network ID. And then this is just that uh, page confirming that we are going to connect to the right vendor. And then we're going to go ahead and confirm. Um, and what's going to happen after that, um, after it updates, is it's going to be looking like this. So we will be connected via electronic payments uh, to cash at that point. Um, just as a side note, while we're talking about connecting with PNIs, if the invitation was sent or accepted, you cannot enter the PNI. So from this point here, um, where I have sent my invitation out to connect, you will no longer see the ability to enter the PNI. And that is because that you must cancel your invitation first and then you will see the ability to add that pni so um, that's just a little side note is that you cannot enter the pni if the invitation was um, sent or accepted if they've accepted it you cannot um, enter that as well you would actually need to unlink from that vendor in order to have control of that again and enter the payment network id Network invitation tracker. So this is a real time network invitation tracker that gives you a quick way to view the status on a network invitation to a vendor or a customer and quickly view or take any pertinent actions at each stage right from their profile. So this just kind of goes back to what I was talking about where um, if you have sent it in real time, you can see whether it's been accepted or you're connected. Um, if you have in the interim made changes with your vendor and you are going to pay or get paid some other way, um, or if they have a new account or something like that, then you can go ahead and take those pertinent actions right from their profile page in your bill.com account. Upon sending an invitation to a customer or a vendor, you are going to see that tracker appear at the top of the profile and we can see that on the live account that I just did where I sent an invitation to connect. So we can see that I now have the green banner. Once the invitation is accepted and I'm connected, these two bubbles will turn green at the very end. Um, but until then, um, I am not connected to this vendor. Um, for customers, this is the last step of the connection. So once the customer accepts the invite, 
the tracker is no longer going to appear on the profile and you are successfully linked. So that is something to note as well. You are only going to see this while you are waiting to uh, connect and be accepted by your vendor uh, or your customer. So once the connection has been made, it is going to switch over and it's only going to say electronic payments, which means you are connected at that point. So this kind of leads us to the disconnecting an established connection. So we've talked about what it looks like when you have the green banner and you were kind of waiting to be connected. And then we've also talked about what it looks like when you are connected. So we're gonna kind of look at both different scenarios. So we have one here that is already connected. Uh, this doesn't mean that you can't you know, unlink or disconnect from your customer. If for any reason that you need to do that, under the more actions, you just want to go ahead and click on unlink um, and then disconnect. And then we can see we get the pop-up uh, modal that it has been successfully unlinked here. We are back to square one with mailing checks to this vendor. We can see on example two here, We're going to go ahead and unlink this one also. So then we can see that we have our banner back and we can see that we are connected. So from this example, if you need to make any changes, all you would need to do is select more actions and then cancel invitation. So here we can cancel this invitation um, and then we can see that we are also back to mailing checks for this vendor as well. Okay, so that concludes our presentation for today. We actually finished um, in a little less than 40 minutes. So what I want to do is I want to leave um, the next maybe three or four minutes open in case you guys have any questions, um, anything that's in relation to connecting through the network, um, anything specific that you've encountered that we didn't cover here, maybe you have a question about it, um, something on the overview page, something on the connections page, anything in relation to that, we'll go ahead and leave it open for just um, a couple minutes and Kelly will be able to answer um, those questions. Oh, okay, yes, Rachel. So um, I can show you how to find the PNI number. So if you are in your company um, itself, and these would be the directions that you would want to give to your customer or vendor also, this is how they can find it. So under um, gear icon or the cog wheel in the top right hand corner, it's the settings. You want to go ahead and click on that. This is the settings page. So if you're not familiar with this page, there is a lot of information um, and a lot of hyperlinks that live on this page um, that'll kind of give you a deep dive into the account. So under your company, you can go ahead and click on profile. And then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see the payment network ID is listed here. So this is that unique identifier um, uh, number that's assigned to every bill.com account. Um, so Rachel, that is how you can get your, um, your personal payment network ID or you can direct your customers or your vendors to get that information.
Perfect. Okay, so it looks like we have some um, additional questions coming in. So Kelly is going to get to those. And by the way, you guys, those are great questions that I'm seeing kind of come across the panel. So that's great. Um, and then I did see one question in the chat about um, if this will be sent out. Um, it will be sent out to all of you who registered online. Um, we, we're going to take a few minutes after to get the video edited. Um, and then it will get sent out to you guys um, because you registered and you also attended the session today. So. All right, so we're gonna just kind of leave it open um, for a couple more minutes, make sure there's not any other questions. We are running these sessions uh, or myself and Kelly are running these sessions through the month of November. Um, two days was at 11, and then we're also doing one next week at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And then the following Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So if you would like to attend again, if you think this information would be beneficial to um, anybody else on your team, um, by all means, go ahead and get registered uh, for one of these sessions. Thank you, Rachel. Have a great day as well. All right, so it looks like we're rounding down with the questions, just a couple more that Kelly will go ahead and get answered. Um, and so I hope this information was beneficial for you guys today. Um, we really just wanted to do kind of a deeper dive into the network. Um, really the benefits of connecting through the network is going to be the ability to pay people who are already using bill.com. So you can get them paid faster um, you don't have to send checks, it's e-payments. Um, they're verified vendors, so you know that they, they're, they have the ability to receive payments. They're not gonna have any issues with their accounts being um, you know, not able to receive money or payments failing or things like that. So there's um, all sorts of benefits to using the network and connecting with bill.com users through the network. No problem, Marilee. Thanks so much for joining us. All right, again, um, thanks everybody for logging in and joining us. Um, we got done a little early today, but it looks like we had uh, plenty of time for all these great questions that you guys had. So great questions today um, from everybody within the panel. We hope that you kind of learned some additional information about the build.com network. Um, Kelly and I both appreciate you spending your time with us this morning. Um, we all know that everybody's time is really, really valuable, so we appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing, and then we um, are gonna go ahead and end the session. So um, again, everybody, thanks so much uh, for joining us, and have a great rest of your Monday. Thanks everybody, bye-bye.